Kid Missing TV. Today we're going to talk about the case of Donna Sue Davis. As mentioned in a previous video, I lost a video for this month because it ended up tacked on to the end of another video. So, we're doing this case. Donna Sue Davis was 21 months old from Sioux City, Iowa when she was abducted and murdered on July 10th, 1955. Donna Sue was known as the darling of the neighborhood. She was adored and loved neighborhood-wide. The night that she was kidnapped, um, it had been rainstorming all day. It finally stopped. Um, <coughs> and it was you -oo mid So, her mom opened the window when she put her to bed, and I, and I thought it was so cute. Um, she gave her a bath, and then she sang her a little ditty. Three to get ready, and four to go. Too bad. I just thought that was the cutest thing. And she kissed her and put her to bed. Her crib was in mom and dad's room. And... So, mom went downstairs, sat in the kitchen to read the newspaper. Um, about 9.25, there was a disturbance in the house behind them, um, which was owned by the, I want to get this right, Fijeldos, Fijeldos family, when their dog went nuts, and they saw a man outside, actually the wife did, so she called her husband, he shined a flashlight at the man, um, noticed so when, when the man came back around, he was crouched down. He was no longer standing up straight or erect. Um, we don't really use that word anymore, but they did back then. Um, because he was carrying a bundle. And Mr. Fieldos really thought that he might be carrying a bundle of poisoned meat to poison the dogs in the neighborhood. Because about two weeks before... Someone was trying to mess with his car, and his dog caught him. He started barking ferociously. So, he told his wife, you hold the flashlight on him, I'm calling the cops. So he went in and called the police. Um, they were on their way when around 9.40... Donna Sue's dad um, <coughs> went up to go to bed and peek in on his daughter because she was right in the room, you know. Before he climbed into bed, he looked in the crib and she wasn't there and he yelled down to his wife, Where's Donna Sue? And then he saw that the screen had been removed from the window. This guy had to have scaled up the side of the house somehow and scaled back down. The people saw him what they called skulking around. That's kind of an old word we don't use either. It means sneaking um, by their house. But as I said, they had some issues so they didn't think a lot of it. Um, then, after he noticed that the window screen had been completely removed, Excuse me, he ran downstairs and called the police. Like I said, not knowing they were already on their way to the neighborhood. When his wife realized what had happened, she screamed, My baby's gone! My baby's gone! And the whole neighborhood was standing outside with um, Mr. Fieldos, Mr. Fieldos um, heard her scream and then it. Uh, dawned on all of them. It had to almost immediately, oh my god, the bundle was Donna Sue. And they immediately, 25 of them, went out and started searching. Mr. Davis went out and started searching. He got his car stuck in a ditch. Because it had, as I said, it had been raining and <coughs> there was mud and he got stuck in the mud. Um, a friend pulled him out and they went on their way searching but had no luck. 
Um, <clears throat> several people actually saw that man that night. The first person that actually saw him was Mr. George Berger. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Family began gathering at the Davis home almost right away. Um, at 10.05 p.m., a Mr. Goldberg sees a man standing near a car with Nebraska plates that appeared to be a two door Chevrolet. When he was driving down the road about an hour later, on the radio, he heard the broadcast about the missing baby. Um, so he called the police. He had memorized the license plate, but it was the middle of the night, so they couldn't do anything with it. And I don't think it came to anything anyway. Um, they put a bulletin out to the states of Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota to be on the lookout for the little girl. At 3.45 the next afternoon, a man named Mr. O'Lurking um, and a couple of boys were driving down the road in their tractor and they spotted the bottoms of Donna Sue's pajamas and her um, rubber panties. Now, if you're over 40 years old, you probably know what rubber panties are. They were panties that were literally like plastic rubber that you put over a diaper. Um, usually you put them over a cloth diaper. It adds a little pee pee protection. <laughs> um, so if you're not that old, you may not have ever heard of rubber panties. I had them for my dolls. Um, <coughs> um, when he, Mr. Olerkin got home, his wife decided that it was time to go pick up their daughters from Girl Scout camp. So she stopped off at her sister-in-law's house, Mr. Olerkin's brother's wife, and um, they took two cars. But most of the kids went with the first Mrs. O'Lurking, and the other lady drove alone because they wanted to, they all wanted to be with their cousins and whatever. Um, and when they got back, they decided to search. They said it was just mother's intuition we needed to search. Um, so they were driving around in their cars searching. All of a sudden, the girls just let out a scream they saw the baby's body just inside a cornfield. Both ladies stopped, went and looked. Um, Mrs. Or, <laughs> O-lurking, O-lurking, I hope I'm saying that right, the one that had all the kids with her, took all the kids back to her house and called police, leaving the other Mrs. O-lurking to stay with the body. Um, she found a, an old paper sack, I'm thinking a paper grocery bag, um, and laid it over the baby. Now I know people are saying, what about evidence of oh, contamination? But you know what? She's a mom. She's trying to give that child dignity. Um, I need to give you a warning on this next part. Because this next part describes her injuries, and I have never seen or heard of injuries like this on a 21 month old baby. She had bruises all over her. She had blunt force trauma to her head, which ultimately caused a brain hemorrhage that killed her. She had cigarette burns and or cigarette lighter burns on her buttocks. And I think when they're saying cigarette lighter back then, I think they're talking about the car lighter. Which would leave a distinct pattern in the skin. Ugh. Um, 
Anyway, she just was, she was battered, is how they described it. She was also raped and sodomized. I think most people know what sodomized means, and I'm not going to describe it. She was battered so badly that the left, well, that would be the side, left side of her jaw was actually broken. Yeah. Um, there were three different suspects, two of which came forward and admitted they did it and they didn't. Um, and the third was Otto Wenekamp. Um, Otto Wenekamp had pulled a fast one on a car dealer. He, um, turned his car in, like, traded it in, and took the new car on a test drive, presumably to go get the money to come back and finish the transaction. He never came back. And when the dealer looked in the car, he saw cigarette burns on the dashboard and called police. He wasn't the killer. Um, <coughs> again, two more men. One I didn't get the name of, but he was actually at a carnival in Missouri working at the time. And another man named Virgil Wilson confessed. He was also proven not to be the killer. Um, the local newspaper actually had a reward fund that stayed active until 1957. Um, <clears throat> the detective that was on the case for 15 years passed away in 1970, January of 1970. He kept meticulous notes, cross-referenced notes in spiral notebooks. I hope they still have those notebooks. Um, they say he went a little batty at the end of his life, but who knows how old he was. Um, but he was, they say, obsessed with this case. This family needs to know what happened. Her siblings need to know. <coughs> I don't think her parents are still alive, but her siblings definitely need to know what happened to her. Well, they know what happened to her, but they, they need to put a face to the monster that abruptly ended their childhoods. And so does every other kid in that neighborhood. Um, in reading this, and I was reading it on the um, Sioux City Police Department, no, on the Iowa Cold Case page, I've got to tell you, they did a beautiful job. The pictures are from them as well. Um, I can't thank them enough for all the information. I um, was reading it and reading about the type of neighborhood that it was and how the people got together and searched together and and they just all the kids played together and rode bikes together. It just reminded me of the neighborhood I grew up in. Those neighborhoods are special because they're few and far between. Probably not back then. But even in the 80s, you didn't have it as much. Like I said, more more in small towns. And this, this was a big city. Um, but I was lucky. And Donna would have been lucky to grow up in that neighborhood. And she should have been able to. And had she grown up, she would be 69 years old this coming September. She was born one year before my mom. She was born in September of 1953. Um, she had dark blonde hair and big blue eyes. Our prayers go out for her family and the community that would never be the same. If you have any information that can help bring this monster to justice, and this this man is a monster, you know, I, I don't like calling people an animal because animals treat their young better than humans do, and an animal wouldn't do that to a baby. Um, he's a monster, plain and simple. And he needed to be caught a long time ago because you can rest assured 
He has raped many more children. He's probably killed more children. Um, I wonder if he's the same man that killed Sharon Gallegos. That was right in Nebraska. The body was found in a Nebraska cornfield of this little girl. Um, well, that was in New Mexico, but she was found in Nebraska. Uh, Sharon was, and this little girl was found in a Nebraska cornfield. I wonder if they put the DNA together that they had from each case. They might be able to figure that out. I hope. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any information in this case, you can call your local FBI office, 1-800-THE-LOST, which is NICMIC, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, or the Sioux City Police Department, Sioux City, Iowa, at 1-712-279-6390. I hope you enjoyed this show. Please click that like button, click that subscribe button, and remember to click the bell for all notifications. We're trying to get hashtag 500 by June. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.